Welcome back to the Aussie Shed, ladies and gentlemen, for another episode of Project Fair Lady. In today's episode, I'll be covering a few pressing matters. Pardon the pun. Due to some parts holdups that are out of my control, I'm still waiting on bits and pieces so that I can get the rear cradle assembly and differential back into the car. So what I'm about to do is I'm going to rebuild these rear hubs. Now, I have uh, all the new bushings to press into them. I also have all the new wheel bearings and hubs. All genuine Nissan stuff. Yeah, and all the bushings to go in are all going to be spherical bushings. So, now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press the hubs into the rear wheel bearings. So I'll just go and get myself set up over there, folks. Uh, currently the hubs are chilling out in the freezer inside the house. So I'll go and set this stuff up over at the press and I'll go and get the hubs out of the freezer and we'll uh, start putting some stuff together, eh? <laughs> All right, folks, here we are at the Aussie Shed Pressmaster 5000. If you'd like to see how I made this press, I'll leave a link right there. So let's get some bits together. Oh, and there's our hub, folks. Straight out of the freezer. It's bloody cold. I'll just throw a little bit of light oil in there just to sort of help it. Just using a bit of three-in-one. And hence the reason for the gloves, folks. I certainly wouldn't be bothered with the gloves doing this. Uh, you know. Other than the old three-in-one's a bit on the stinky side. That's one. Beautiful. Now for the second one. Oh, she's cold. Not as cold as my mother-in-law's stare, folks. You can see, folks, that's pretty hard going there for a 20-ton press doing this. I, uh, I could have got a little bit more stick out of it by using the handle. The, uh, the air over hydraulic unit doesn't seem to really give it as much grunt as uh, doing it by hand, but it's just so much faster to sort of use the air power on it, you know. But uh, she's all done. It, uh, it pressed in very well. And, uh, yeah, main thing is, we did it, folks. We bloody did it. So the next thing we've got to do is reconfigure the press to push all the bushes into this fella here. Alright folks, we are cooking with gas now. Let's get this sucker in. Hopefully. Hopefully it goes in without too many problems. Folks, one beautiful spherical bushing, a 
and that's our, that's our shock mount bushing. Next up, a couple of these guys. Notice there was a little bit of a lump on the aluminium there, folks, and the ram wasn't going to clear it. So, uh, yeah, that's hence the adjustment. All right, this guy's next. There we go. That's uh, that's pretty good. All right, we'll lube her up. The reason I modified this press, folks, apart from the fact of doing the air over hydraulic conversion to make the thing a hell of a lot easier to use was, you know, all this building in all this adjustment so that you can press together tricky things, you know, I can slide the head of the press backwards and forwards as well. It was all relatively simple stuff to do. So if you're that way inclined, folks, have a look at my 20 ton press modification series. You'll find it quite enlightening. Anyway. Might do this once again as a bit of a two stage thing, folks. I'll get it started so it's nice and straight. Then I'll just have to go across slightly to one side. And this third arm here, folks, that's just where your uh, your rear steering rack, like your high cast rack mounts on here. And there's, obviously this thing has a high cast delete on it. So it's just a bush that goes in there. Hence the reason why there's not one of these spherical bearings in there. But, uh, so that's that one pretty, pretty much complete, folks. So what I'll do, I'll do the other one off camera and then we'll take it to the bench or we'll take them both to the bench and we'll uh, assemble the hub into the upright. Very nice. Before we do that though, I'm just quickly going to finish off these uh, these lower control arms. These have been powder coated. These are the uh, ones that I pulled out of the car. I've uh, already pressed in the new bushings. There are spherical bushing in there. I'm going to do the lower ball joints now. These ball joints aren't available from this and they want you to buy the whole control arm. They are available aftermarket though. Uh, and this is what you need here, folks. This is a Moog K9633. I got these from RGS Performance from Rob. He's part of the Z32 community here in Australia. Carries a lot of stock for Z32. Seems like a really decent guy. I've talked to him on the phone. Um, yeah, so there you go. Moog K9633. I did try to source these in the US quite a while ago, but mate, I got dicked around so much. Uh, and then when I found that, uh, that RGS had them, Mate, no worries at all. So there you go, RGS Performance. Good guy, Rob. This should be us, folks. Just like that. Hopefully. It looks pretty good, though. Let's see what happens. there we go these do have a circlip uh, that goes on to retain them you also need to keep the original conical spacer from your old ball joint to go on there so don't throw that away but yeah like the ending folks it's always good to replace any wear part like this you know while you can it's never going to be easier than it is now while all these parts are out so uh, yeah let's quickly do the next one eh There we 
go. One lower control arm ready to go back in. Beautiful. Back at the bench, folks. These are our hubs loosely set up. I haven't got them properly bolted together yet because I have to sandwich the dust shield between them. And I've already done some modifications to the dust shields, but I'm actually going to do a bit more. Uh, that'll be probably in, a, in another video, maybe in the next video. But you can see how it's all starting to look now. We've got all our nice new hubs all fully assembled and sitting on there. All our new bushes are in position, ready to go. I've just been mucking around test fitting the caliper adapter brackets that I'm using. And it's all looking pretty good so far, guys. Um, very happy with this. So, as I say, I'll just throw these to one side. I've got a whole heap of parts ready to go into the rear axle assembly when we, uh, when we get the cradle mounted back up there. But I'll just quickly take these off the bench, folks, and I'll uh, bring the lower control arms back. So this is what we need to finish our ball joint install, folks. All this stuff came with the kit with the Moog ball joints. And these are the two conical spaces that you need to keep off your original ball joints. They just slip onto the, onto the new ball joint like so. But before we do that, there's a circlip that you have to put on that goes around the bottom of the ball joint. Which we will do right now. Alrighty, that's that guy. Alright, there's something, folks. Your circle position slightly higher on the Moog ball joint. Well, that's interesting. Not sure if I'm real happy with that. So the circle is 11.1 off the bottom on the uh, on your factory ball joint. It's about 12 and a half mil on this aftermarket Moog jobby. Which may never be a problem, um, but I'm not real happy about it. So what I think I'm going to have to do, folks, you can see, if you can see in there, I'll shine a bit of light in there. So you can see that gap there, guys. Get myself positioned here. Uh, we've got. Oh, God, it's hard. See this gap in there? Not happy about that. Your factory ball joint, I'm fairly sure, sat a lot tighter. Well, it does by measurement. Sits a lot tighter than that against there. So, what I think I'm going to do is rather than press the ball joints out and then add the spacer to this side, um, what I think I might just do is make a spacer for this side. So, take the circlip back off make a spacer and then put the circlip back on just so that the ball joint can't physically pull down that mill and a half that we've got there because uh, that's just kind of not the best. I'm not super happy with that. But a lot of people do use these. It's the only sort of go-to replacement ball joint. I've never seen anyone talk about uh, having to machine a spacer for them though, but uh, maybe it's just me. But it's built a particular way from the factory, you know, without that gap. And even though it is pressed in, I just, uh, yeah, I'm not happy with that. So I'll machine up a spacer and uh, we'll have another look at this. So I'll turn the camera off, folks. I'll machine up a couple of spacers and we'll come back to this. Alrighty, I'll see you soon. Alright, folks, I'm back. So this is my solution. I machined up a spacer, 1.3 millimeters thick it is, which will then slip over the ball joint, take up the slack, and then the circlip fits nice and tight over the top. So there's no chance of the ball joint uh, coming down or rocking around or anything like that. So how I've done it, folks, I've just gotten hold of a uh, just a, a washer here out of my pile of crap. And this guy measures about, uh, it's about 1.9, folks, about 1.9. So what I've done with it then is I've made a mandrel just out of a bolt and a spacer and a few bits, of, bits and pieces. So that I've now gone from this to this, and then I'm going to mount this on the mini lathe into a collet chuck, so it'll grip on the bolt really, really well, 
and uh, hopefully it'll spin pretty flat. The first one I did spun reasonably flat. I tapped it around with a hammer a little bit to get it sort of spinning up perfect. Took the overall size down and reduced the thickness and then uh, sort of cut it off in this direction. And uh, that's it, folks. That's sort of all there is to it. Um, but once again, folks, one of those things, if you don't have the gear to do it, you're kind of screwed. So let me know what you guys have done. Has anyone out there had this same problem and did they come to the same conclusion that I did? Or have you just installed the ball joint and left it and just kind of thought, oh, well, it'll be right? I don't know. Not the way I'd do it, but uh, that's my solution anyway, guys. So I'll go and turn this one down and then I'll fit them up and I'll give you a look at them once they're, uh, they're in position. Alrighty. That's the one. All right, folks. Both spaces are done now. They turned out very well. Uh, I can't really finish fitting them up, folks, because they are mild steel, and uh, I'm about to get my uh, my zinc plating kit out anyway, because I've got a heap more nuts and bolts and brackets and stuff. I've got a plate. So I might save these and throw them in with the zinc plating, mainly because this is on the, the bottom, obviously. This is the lower control arm. It does get quite a bit cruddy down in this area. As I say, I think a little bit of zinc plating uh, will definitely help the longevity of these things. And, you know, as they are at the moment, you can see they're bare metal. They're probably just going to rust and turn to crap pretty quickly. But we can certainly sort that out. But if it was going together, it's now just a matter of dropping that on putting your circlip in, throwing your bloody rubber boot on, I'll just get rid of that for now, stick your rubber boot on, that pushes down a fair bit more obviously, throw your spacer on, put your nut on, slip your split pin in, screw your grease nipple into the bottom, give her a bit of grease and away you go folks, but uh, apologies for that, I was hoping to get this arm finished, but unforeseen circumstances, as I mentioned earlier, I don't know what people normally do. I'm sure I'm not the only person that this has happened to, considering this is a standard lower control arm, standard replacement ball joint. It has to be the way they all are. Uh, as I said, I haven't seen anyone else do this. Correct me if I'm wrong, let me know what you think about it, leave a bloody comment. Uh, so I think we'll leave this video here, folks. Uh, I hope you liked that, uh, the trials and tribulations of setting all this sort of new stuff up, you know, the mix between aftermarket and OE components, you get all these sorts of hassles and stuff. But anyway, hope you liked the video, and hopefully next week we'll have something a little bit more substantial once the parts I'm waiting on get here. So as always folks, thanks for stopping by the Aussie Shed, bloody pleasure to have you here. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, remember to leave the comment as it helps me out heaps with the YouTube algorithm. As always, folks, I'll bloody well see us on the next one. Cheers.